Kim Ortis is my name. I'm a Perth boy. Uh, lived in Perth most of my life, although I spent 20 years up in the Northwest, uh, living in Port Hedland. So, um, mad fisherman. That was probably the the mecca of fishing. It's a, probably the best kept fishing secret in Australia, I believe. So, so when we returned back from Port Hedland, I had a uh, six and a half metre um, Jackman uh, aluminium centre console. Uh, wasn't really suitable for Perth and the conditions with the sea breeze and also for Rottnest and the family. Couldn't really have days out there, it was just a pure fishing boat. So I looked around and my father previously owned a Caribbean Bertram 25. So when this came up, I thought I'd, uh, yeah, buy it. So uh, the ideal boat for off Perth, it's good in a sou'wester and perfect Rottnest boat for weekends. Uh, I'm the third owner, it's a 1985 uh, model. Um, an old chap uh, he used to live here in the river. Uh, he had it for about 10 years and then he sold it to another guy that lived in Mandra, lived down there for uh, a bit over 10 years and then I purchased it and it lives up at uh, Hillary's now. So I've, I've got a big aluminium trailer, it's easier for me uh, to keep it on a trailer as far as, as far as maintenance goes. Um, I've got a back lane where my house is so I can store it quite easily down the back, fits in perfectly. Um, my two daughters and my wife, our, our ideal day is to get the rot nest. Uh, we've got a nice little bay at uh, West End, Eagle Bay, and we uh, pull up there and uh, the girls go swimming and I can get a surf out the back of the island quite regularly. Um, and also I put the uh, little inflatable in and go and catch a few herring and a few squid and we normally spend a Saturday night, or have a weekend over there. So we, we try and do that every second weekend through summer. Yeah, so when I first purchased the boat, it, you know, it was, uh, being an old boat, I was a little bit worried about the quality of the motors, even though they had been serviced and looked after. Both previous owners were quite fastidious as far as uh, maintenance went, so I was fortunate there. Uh, they had the two uh, 170 four-cylinder Mercruisers inboard outboards, uh, which are marinized. Uh, they were great motors, really reliable. Um, they'd probably done close on a thousand hours by the time I got it. I uh, did both the heads and uh, the manifolds, it's fairly standard, so... And I had around six years of uh, very comfortable running, reliable running out of those motors, but um, they'll get into that age where I thought I'd better replace it. And uh, I spent some time doing some research, looked at diesel motors for a long time, um, and decided uh, maybe they were a bit expensive for the, for the size of the boat and whether it was uh, value for money. And uh, I went down and uh, visited Shay at uh, Maddich Marine and Shay talked to me about the uh, 6.2 350 horsepower and said it would be a perfect fit. Um, you know, he thought it was a good idea to upgrade this vessel rather than go and buy a new boat. It's pretty hard to replace these quality hulls so he talked me into putting in the uh, 350 horsepower and having a look back. Yeah, really enjoy it. Yeah, I am Shay, I'm from Maddich Marine in Perth, Western Australia. Uh, what we do is uh, Mercury Mercruiser, stern drive and inboard repair and repairs, and also Mercury outboard service repairs and uh, warranty work. Oh, well, the customer he had the old 470 twins in here. Um, they were getting on a bit, a bit unreliable parts, getting a bit hard to source, and they're pretty thirsty. So Kim approached us of what he can do to repair it. The options of twins is not really the way to go in these. Uh, there's just not the room to put anything decent without major construction work. Kim had already pulled the motors out, so then we filled in the transoms, recut the new hole, reset the engine mounts, and installed the, the single engine. Because uh, I like the, the, the safety you know, factor with having two motors, if one played up, I, and it only ever happened to me once, uh, I think a set of points caved in on the old motors but you know I was able to get home on one so I thought oh you know reliability might be a factor but then I thought well it's brand new new technology then I, I was a little bit concerned about um, uh, you know maneuverability uh, having two motors you can turn it on the, on a dime it's uh, really really easy to maneuver in a yacht club so that concerned me a little bit and also the roll of the boat I, I was a bit worried that uh, having a single motor in the boat may roll a little bit being a fairly small boat with a flybridge, they can roll, but that was that became a, a non-issue. So, yeah, they were probably some of the little things that I was a bit concerned about. It's been great to be able to put the, the V8 petrol, um, 350 horsepower, 6.2 litre, um, fuel injected. That's been um, pretty amazing coming off an old carbureted type engine. 
um, with the DTS, the control systems, uh, just everything about it sufficient. And uh, they were questions that I raised with Shay at the time and said, you know, is it a big job? And he said, no, it's, uh, we do them all the time. We just plug in fiberglass and uh, you won't even notice the modification. And then they cut out the uh, single hole for the, um, for the new leg. And uh, no, it was, it was very easy. I think they modified the engine mounts, you know, how it all sits. And, but uh, it's a lot cleaner. It, it looks like it's built for that motor, actually. So it works well. The motor's uh, panned out much better than what I had uh, sort of envisaged. I, I didn't realise it'd have as much power that it has. Um, the controls are amazing. Um, it's fly by wire. It's um, you know wouldn't wouldn't go back to the old cable system. Now everything about it's probably exceeded my uh, expectations. I mean, when servicing these motors, accessibility is is critical. If if we can't get to things, we can't do them. This boat's got a lot of room, so we can get to it. But Mercury's have made it easier by by making. The, one of the critical things, a seawater pickup pump at the front of the engine, it's not down the bottom anymore in the depths. It's pretty much in the middle and you can get to it easy and you can unbolt it. It's very simple. And that makes life a lot easier for us, uh, a lot easier and a lot cheaper for the customer because it doesn't take us as long to do it. Yeah, so a, a normal weekend at Rottnest where we go, we're, I'd, with the old motors, I'd use between 110 to 120 litres for the weekend. Um, putting the new motor in, uh, I'm now using between 80 and 90 litres, so it's uh, significantly uh, more efficient, which is good. Um, just gives me a few more options. These have, I think it's got a 350 litre fuel tank, so you know, it gives me some options if I want to go offshore off uh, Durian Bay out to the Abrolhos or somewhere like that. Uh, I know the economy's there and it's a bit like, uh, yeah, it's just having that um, extra capacity to, to travel long distances. Um, yeah, it's very attractive. It's just probably no comparison, really. Uh, having both the the old motors in there, that they, they, they perform well, but they didn't have that reaction that this motor has. This is a, as soon as you put the, the throttle down, you, you feel that reaction immediately. Um, and you know, I'm probably still a bit of a petrol head in my young days, and uh, there's nothing better than uh, flooring it and flying along and. Uh, yeah, zipping around the place, it's much more manoeuvrable, which surprised me. Uh, the twin prop set up on the leg uh, gives you much more traction. Overall, yeah, it's been perfect, yeah. Well, this, <laughs> this thing's like a ski boat. It, get, it gets up, it goes. You know, she, she does near on 44 knots now, and it pulls out of the hole just, just like a little ski boat. It, it's amazing. And you don't have to give it a fistful, but if you want to, and you want to come home from Rotto that little bit quicker, you can always open it up and get there that little bit faster. Well, the three to three and a half thousand is when these really shine. When you accelerate, they just launch. They, the amount of torque it's got sitting there, <laughs> it just doesn't want to stop. You just go, you, you nail it from 3000 RPM and you have to hold the steering wheel. <laughs> It'll throw you out the back. Probably the best uh, experiences that I have with the Duro prop is its uh, reaction time as soon as you put it in gear, it's, it's you know it bites in and, the, and you get um, forward momentum or in reverse. So coming into Hillary's can be quite tight. There's uh, it's a fairly popular uh, boat harbour, uh, and you often have to line up for um, you know to try to get your trailer in and, and take the boat out. So so having that um, ability to be able to put it forward, and reverse, and get that uh, instant sort of traction has been uh, exceptional. Um, so it's got uh, twin gauges, uh, uh, one's rev counter, the other one's with the knots. But within that, the, uh, all the engine control systems um, are accessible, just touch button. Uh, so I can check on temperature, fuel efficiency, uh, oil pressure, anything I need to look at is available on the gauges. Well, with the adaptive speed control, it, it keeps the engine at a constant RPM no matter what you're doing, whether you're going up a swell, down a swell, in a turn, got a skier on the back, it, it doesn't matter. So if you find you are towing a skier, especially in a boat like this, which is, I, you can tow skiers with this boat, I've seen it done. When you go into that turn, you don't have to accelerate out, the engine does it for you. You don't even think about it, you can't select it, you can't stop it from doing it. it you buy it, you get it with the product free of charge and it, that's what it, it does what it's supposed to do. I've, I've, I think I've done around 45 hours 
Um, so I've, you know, I've had the motors in for about a year and a half. Uh, you know, I was hoping to, yeah, do at least a hundred by now, but they're uh, just time, time poor. Well, Kim loves the boat. He, it's a classic boat. They've been around forever and a day. Everybody wants one. They're a great sea boat. And he wanted to keep it. And his only option was to repower it or stick with the old girls that were in it. That we're going to cause him a lot of grief. And he, he did it for value for money and for the boat. And that's a, the good reason to do it. And it keeps it going. Um, dealing with Shay has been, uh, it's, it's just been a joy, I suppose. Uh, I don't want to pump him up too much, but no, he's been fantastic. He's a bit of a perfectionist, so uh, when he told me about the um, the process, I was quite impressed. He said, you know, he told me every little detail as to what was going to happen and how it would look, and I sort of, at the time, thought, oh yeah, this is a good sales pitch, but he's come through flying colours. After sales service has been exceptional. Um, you know, the 25-hour service, I live probably 30 kilometres away from uh, Shay's workshop, but they were very happy to mobilise and come up to my place and, and uh, do the boat in situ at home, which was fantastic. Uh, when I ring him about any, um, don't have any issues with it, but with any questions, you know, I've looked at probably changing the prop. He gives me, uh, you know, the, the right science about, about the prop size and what, what he basically uh, tailored for the boat. Um, which has been perfect. So yeah, no issues there at all. Been really good follow up.